In this episode I will be trying to set up a relay network consisting of three satellites going into roughly 800 kilometers orbit so that they could actually talk to the moon. Our next thing will be getting the probe off to the moon and to do that we will need a relay network to, make, to ensure that we can maintain the connectivity between Kerbin and the moon. So it's gonna be three satellites in a triangle formation so let's get right into it. All right, guys, so we are going to go with the Probo Dobodain Octo and we're first we're going to build the relays themselves and then we're going to be building the craft that will deploy them. So the relays themselves can be really simple, consisting of a probe core, SAS unit, some batteries, a tank. And currently we don't have like a small caliber tank, which would be like, you know, your standard Oscar B or Oscar C. So we're going to go with a trick where we're going to use the RCS instead. So, uh, actually I'm going to go with the Probodobodyne Hex. Uh, I think it's, it, it's, it's more surfaces for me. So that's fine. I'm going to be placing one, uh, communitron antenna because this will be an omni antenna. So this will be ensuring that it talks to the KSC and everything else. And then I will have three of those relays or, you know, foldable antennas, uh, which will help us talk to other sections. Oh, they, these are actually quite big ones. And actually they are quite consuming in terms of power requirements. Uh, should I take those or should I take the smaller ones? I'm actually thinking maybe I should go with the smaller ones. I mean, these HG20, okay, photovoltaic panels, we can have three. They're generating 1.6 charge per second. So times three, that would be 4.8 roughly. And these antennas actually do take a lot. So they, those are power hungry. So I'm thinking almost maybe we should actually have the, the three smaller ones antennas instead. I'm going to be placing also some more solar panels around it to make sure that we can have sufficient charge. There we go. Something like this, shall we? Okay. I mean, that looks about right. So yeah, let's close down the antennas and they're clipping. I, I don't like that to be honest. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to place an extra battery. There we go. So that the size wise, we are OK. And these are Kerbin short re range relays Mark one. These will ensure that we can actually communicate. Then I'm going to replace those and I'm going to put the smaller antennas because look, I mean, it's nicer and we only need to reach moon at this point. Sure, we will need to reach Minmus later on. And these are antennas are not sufficient to reach Minmus, but right now I'm thinking we're going to go first with the first ring of satellites will be just to reach the moon. So yeah, and they are very low tech and I can actually make them really precise orbits because of the Delta V cap that I have at the moment. I mean, I don't have a Delta V cap, but you'll see what I'm talking about in a short time. Okay. So we're going to save this as a sub assembly. Set Kerbin short range relay mark one. There we go. A simple Kerbin relay for the short range. There we go. Okay. So actually I want to just fix this one. Okay. I think we're good. Okay. So the next order of business is to build a deployer. For that, we're going to take a regular capsule and it's going to be looking a little bit weird ish, but, uh, uh, that's the way how I've learned to actually build it and I actually like the design because it's really flexible. It will be manned, so I mean crude, where okay, so that to, to ensure that we can actually reach it. Let's put smaller decouplers. There we go. So if I put a smaller decoupler, yeah, now there's no clipping. Much better. Much, much better. Okay, I like it. Okay, then we put a heat shield because the craft obviously has to return back to Kerbin. We're going to put some drogue shoots and we're going to put the, you know, real shoot. Okay. That's for our Kerbal to return safely after deploying everything. Then we have the decoupler. And then we need to build a craft that will actually go into the orbit and deploy these damn things. So uh, just check my staging, make sure that everything is in the correct stage. Stabilizers. Yes, please. 
then we have the batteries but in order to build put the batteries we're gonna place the small ones and we're gonna be placing the four rechargeable batteries together with some un some low-tech solar panels we don't need anything fancy this is just to have enough electricity to perform the work and return back to Kerbin safely okay there we go we have a fuel tank and then we'll need an engine i'm thinking i'm gonna go with terrier because it has slightly more oomph than the puddle or the other one so or the goopy so we're gonna be using that one and then okay decoupler 1184 delta v comms short range sat deployer yeah so see we do make sure that everything is auto strated to the heaviest part then we're gonna be building another decoupler good shall we go with the airstream protective shell yes we shall there we go oh, oh. careful careful there tiger there we go look at it really beautifully wrapped okay let's put three sides with the clamshell deploy on good Okay, so let's put the fuel tank. We're gonna take the standard Mothra fuel tank, and then we're gonna be putting the swivel engine at the bottom, because it has slightly a little bit more oomph than Marlin. I think that's fine. Let's put four fins. There we go. We need to have some control authority over this craft, because it's. I'm afraid it's gonna be a little bit flippy. Uh, then we have four things. Let's put the side boosters. We're gonna go with the thumpers because these ones have actually quite the oomph. And right now I don't have a lot of, I don't have the fuel lines to do the, the wet, so to say, uh, the liquid fuel boosters. So I'm gonna go with the SRBs. They are of course way too much thrust to weight. So I have to reduce their um, output a little bit. So we have to ensure that they don't provide too much output. Otherwise, uh, we will be wasting too much energy going up. So let's see, general launch tower. I think that looks actually kind of cool. Good. What I want to do is launch tower and launch clamps. So uh, do we have a launch tower? Let's see, modular service launch tower. Actually, that looks kind of good. If I place it here, like two stories high, or actually, oh no, there's a modular launch tower. Okay, let's, let's add to it. Okay, two, three, I think that's good enough. Now, let's see, do we have a clamp holding it? Like umbilical swing arm. Do we have, oh, it's too big. Swing arm, maybe like that. If we place it like that, oh, that looks good. I mean, it's clipping a little bit, but I won't tell if you won't, so I think we're good. Let's see, launch clamps. Oh, these are tiny. No, I think we need something bigger. <laughs> this is, I mean, who are we kidding? Oh, now we're talking, all right. So hold down arms, that's good. Beautiful, so let's see if we can actually uh, put the umbilical. I mean, it doesn't make sense for us to put umbilical going into the SRBs, but yeah, I, I think it's good enough. Let's go and launch this sucker, shall we? right time until it finishes i have managed to cut out a little bit of you know time until it finishes because i didn't really want to you to have you know spasms in terms of what do you say light day light day light day you know epilepsy warning and that kind of stuff so we are rolling it out to the launch pad well, it seems like it would be a night launch but i don't like nighttime launches so i like much prefer the morning launch coupling and there we go and we managed to destroy the platform on the ascent. That's just beautiful. And remember when I told you I forgot uh, to adjust things? Well, I didn't. Thrust to weight is 1.8 and climbing, because mainly we are just running on SRBs at the moment, which means the fire stick. You light it up and then you hope you have done your job correctly. So, yeah. All right. It's gonna be burning for seven more seconds and it's gonna put us on a correct trajectory. Jebediah, you are good. Engaging the engines and obviously we are on our way. Uh, the craft doesn't have too much Delta V, if you can tell, by 2.7 in total. That's a little bit wrong because currently our Terrier engine is still in atmosphere, so it's giving us atmospheric reading compared to the 
um, compared to the actual one. And if you take a look at our thrust uh, delta V on the third stage, it's actually climbing, although ever so slightly, because it's, it's going to be pushing a heavy weight. So yeah, there we go. The goal of this stage is just to get us orbital, so Apoapsis height is climbing and it's hopefully going to end up somewhere at the 80 range, which is good. So yeah. All right, coming there. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, there we go. Let's just make sure that we circularize. It's a little bit tilted, but what can you do? I don't care. At this point, point I only want to deploy the satellites in whichever orbit I possibly can. These are the low-tech ones. Later in the series, I'm going to be some build some fancy satellites with the robotics that can extend, have their arms and whatnot. But we are nowhere near that yet at the moment. So we need something very basic that will basically just relay until uh, our probe gets to the moon. And that's it. All right, Jebediah. Hope you're ready, buddy. We're going to be doing burn in five, four, three, two, one, and ignition. There we go. 900 meters per second to burn, and we have 200 in this stage. So, yeah, we're going to be expending quite a lot, actually. And honestly, guys, a small confession I did underestimate the Delta V requirements for this. So, it's not going to be the perfect orbit or the perfect network but I'm hoping that it will at least do its job for the time being. So, yeah. There's that. 350 meters per second to go. Everything looks dandy. Beautiful. 200 meters per second. 100. And soon enough, we're gonna get orbital. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in orbit. Jebediah, you look happy. You sure are, buddy. All right. Time for the screenshot. Ev. Not sure if that's going to be the screenshot for the episode, but you never know. All right. Now, what we want to do is we want to start deploying stuff. Uh, the trick here when deploying is we really, to perform everything, we need to have a communication with the KSC. And while we don't need it for Jebediah, we need it for the satellites that will be performing, you know, burns and whatnot. Or at least we need it to transmit the command because the flight computer is going to execute. But we have to make sure that we actually transmit the command. So we're going to point to maneuver prograde. And I'm thinking I'm going to use a good portion of the Delta V for this craft to be able to raise our periapsis significantly. There we go, and kicking it in. I'm gonna small, reserve a small amount of Delta V to ensure that Jebediah can return back to Kerbin. So we're burning as much as we can to raise our peria apoapsis at least to say, let's say 700 or 800. There we go, 795, 800. I'm happy with that. And with 175 meters per second, it's enough to perform the deorbit burn that will bring Jebediah back. At the top of our apoapsis, we will be performing the circularization burn. So now idea is to get over there. Good. Do we have the connectivity? That's actually one thing that's been bothering me. Okay, let's see. We extend one of these communitrons and we do have the connectivity. Good. Okay. Point the craft prograde and let's decouple, shall we? Good. Switch to the craft. There we go. Extend the solar panels. Beautiful. Now we shall be performing the circularization burn. The trick here, since I'm using the RCS, I have no idea how much actually Delta V I have. Uh, that's one of the limitations, but then again, we have as much as we have. We cannot do anything about it right now. So we're just going to use all that we can and be none the wiser. Good. All right. There we go pointing the craft prograde and we're going to enable the RCS and we're going to be performing the burn soon enough. Right. So let's rename the vessel. We're going to call it Satellite Kerbin Short Range Relay 1. Good. Beautiful. All right. And we're going to start the burn roughly one minute. 
It says 0.1 seconds. I don't think that's the case, but yeah. There we go. And now it's still not telling us what our delta V calculation is because we're using monoprop, but at least we can just use it to, well, circularize as much as we can. Look at this. Beautiful shot, isn't it? I certainly think so. Okay, and I'm using attitude thrusters just to make sure that we correct so that we are on the maneuver node. Shall we be able to make 800 by 800? I certainly hope so. 800 by 727 and we are out of monoprop. Well, like I said, it's not perfect, but it will do. Okay, now, first we put the target to active vessel. That will be all the vessels that we will be controlling. So that's the first one. Second one, when playing with the remote tech, we want to be pointing at the moon. So, okay, come on. Second one, select target. Moon. And at this point, I was actually thinking that the third one would be Minmus. Then I realized, hold on, this antenna doesn't have the range to Minmus. Right. Well, I'm gonna place it to Minmus anyway. I mean, it will at least... It will at least manage to point to a Minmus while our craft is transitioning to it, at least until we get reach Moon. Okay, that's one. Let's make sure that we deploy the second one. I'm gonna fix the orbits later, so I'm just extending these. Decouple. There we go. We do have control and that's a really important thing to remember because we don't won't have control every time, so we might as well be careful. Okay, there we go. We're gonna decouple this one as well. All right, so we just need to make sure extending the solar panels to ensure that we have communication. Good. Now let's deorbit this guy. All right, beautiful. Jebediah, you are gonna coming back home. So periapsis height at the 33, that's good enough. And let's return you. The other craft can actually circularize and complete things on our own. The reason why I'm actually deorbiting is because Jebediah doesn't have a lot of life support. I am playing with life support and it doesn't have a lot of supplies. He has just the default amount of snacks that he was managed to pack in his, you know, in his um, capsule. So, yeah, there's that. All right. There we go. And let's do the toasty re-entry. This is all extremely accelerated for your convenience, obviously. So Jebediah is really happy and he is coming down. Everything is just great. There we go. Jebediah, you managed to safely touch down. Beautiful. All right. Now it's time to do this final circularization. All right. Also, guys, I need to activate these antennas, one to moon, one to active craft, and one to minmus, despite the fact that we won't be reaching it with this antenna. Yeah, could have planned better, but it is what it is. In the next episode, guys, I plan to send a small, you know, remote-controlled probe to the moon, as you will be able to see in this video, suggested by my avatar. And I hope you will like it, because at the time of publishing this, it's unyet unpublished, so you get a sneak peek. Enjoy! See you in the next one!